Director of Lane Arts Council. We work to support the arts throughout Lane County. Apoyamos a los, los artes en todo el condado de Lane. And we really believe that the arts are the best way to bring communities together, right? ¿Verdad? Las artes son la mejor manera para unir la gente. Y por eso creamos Fiesta. That's why we created this event, because we want to have Latino artists here at the forefront of our community to showcase their incredible work. We have an incredible Latino community here and we're so glad this event helps highlight the, their work. So let's help acknowledge all of the Latino artists that have participated in this event today. We have baile folklorico, charo, we have comida, hay música en vivo, live music. We have two bands tonight. So we know that you're going to love dancing tonight and you're all going to join in because it's really, that's why we're here, ¿verdad? La vida es un baile, ¿verdad? <laughs> so we're going to have a great time and I really hope you enjoy yourself. This actually is the first stop of the first Friday Art Walk. Es la, el paseo de arte y la primera parada. So you'll have a great time on the Art Walk and Art Walkers can also continue to see the various um, you know, galleries that are part of the Art Walk. You can stay here and enjoy the fiesta. And Jessica has Art Walk brochures. She's over there if you need a guide. Hay algunos boletos si quieren más información sobre este evento, Paseo de Arte. But Fiesta Cultural is not just this event. This is the first event. It's the kickoff event. Hay más que 30 eventos. There's more than 30 events part of Fiesta Cultural, and it's from September to December. So we also have Fiesta Cultural brochures. So take a look because you'll see so many different events in Cottage Grove and Springfield and Eugene, poetry and dance, all sorts of events with Latino artists. So please pick up some brochures and, and you can look on our website at laneArts.org for more information. Now, I really want to thank our partners and sponsors. First of all, the, our, our partner, our co-producer of this event, Co-Productor de ese evento, it's the City of Eugene Cultural Services Huge Fund. Please help me thank the City of Eugene. Un aplauso para la ciudad de Eugene. Thank you for valuing this event and doing an incredible job of helping us set this up. You guys are so essential to the success. And I also want to thank all of our sponsors, Los Patricinadores. First, I want to thank the Law Offices of Lourdes Sanchez for being one of our title sponsors. Gracias a Lourdes y Mayo. Muchísimas gracias a ellos. I want to thank the Starsea Foundation, Taco Bor, Los Monarcas de Eugene, Jordan Schnitzer Museum of Art, the Museo de Arte, y Hector Norman. Please help me thank all of our sponsors. Un aplauso para ellos. We have so many partners. You'll see artists and all the different booths. But really, some of the socios de comunidad, some of our partners in organizing this event are KLCC, La Que Buena, Centro Latinoamericano, Downtown Languages, Eugene Arte Latino, Salceros um, Dance Company, and Huerto de la Familia. Un aplauso para ellos también. How many of you, it's uh, your first time at Fiesta Cultural? Okay, nice. How many of you, your second time? Woo! How many of you came three years? Oh, nice. 
Well, some of you know, last year we had an incredible MC, Maestro de Ceremonia, Jill Torres. She's fantastic. She's a DJ of Ahora C si on KLCC on Sunday nights. She also used to be a teacher, and she's an activist in our community. And now she went back to school to, con uh, to continue study. So she's a fantastic uh, MC. She's a musician herself. She'll give you lots of information about art and culture. So it'll be very informative as well. So, un aplauso para Jill Torres. Help me welcome Jill Torres. Muy buenas tardes, gente. También un aplauso para Leora. Without Leora, she wouldn't have had this idea to make this event possible. So, otro aplauso para Leora, por favor. Gente, qué emoción ver tanta gente aquí. ¿Verdad? Qué emoción. Vamos a empezar con unos bailes. We're going to go ahead and get started. First, we're going to have... I believe three separate dance groups up here for you tonight. We're going to get started off with Mariachi Alma de Mexico. And as you can see, we have some young folks up here who have survived the first week of school and are here to perform for you. So, queremos agradecer a los jóvenes también, la directora del grupo Monica Olvera. Y, como no, Charería El Deporte Nacional por Excelencia de Mexico. Charería as I learned this summer, it's actually kind of a lot like gymnastics. It's horsemanship in Mexico. And you get all sorts of points for being able to move your horse with certain directions and certain amounts. of. It's amazing. You can look more into that. But with us, we have Antonio Huerta, who will be performing some rope tricks for you. Y también Mariachi Monumental. Empezamos con este grupo ahorita después. Salceros Dance Company. So, un aplauso para el ballet folklorio. Antonio Huerta y Mariachi Monumental. ¡Empezamos, gente!
and a second part of our dance troupe. Also, folks are wondering, you can help power the stage by riding a bicycle for a few minutes. Si quieren ayudar a, pues claro, después de la canción, ¿verdad? Pero si quieren ayudar a generar electricidad para el escenario, pueden montarse en bicicleta, ¿verdad? And so, let's get another round of applause for our mariachi group, Vale Popurico y Antonio Huerta. So I will ask some questions and then everybody else can have a chance to, to also answer some questions. To ask some questions. This part is going to be by Lynn Wall, who speaks Spanish here. ¿Quién más habla español? ¿Alguien más? Ok, perfecto. Entonces vamos a hacer este tour, va a ser bilingüe. Eh, vamos a estar haciendo las preguntas y las respuestas en inglés y en español. Ok, así es que todo el mundo tiene oportunidad de preguntar, ya sea en inglés o en español. Ok, entonces voy a dejar que los artistas se presenten ahora. Um, so I will give you the mic and you can tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi. I don't I don't know that I've ever spoken through one of these before, but <laughs> I'll try. Um, my name is Annalie Fuentes. I've been in the community for a long time making art. This is my partner in crime, Suzanne Tellez, who's also does the beautiful uh, recycled tin jewelry over there on that table. Um, I am an educator as well as an artist. I'm now retired, which is really great. <laughs> if any of you were thinking about retiring, do it. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. Um, and so now I have more time to make art. Um, I have the, over here, there's the Northwest Loteria cards that I made and a few years back they were all original paintings that were kind of a response to what is now a quite popular um, game. I mean, all of this stuff, whoa, is 
Anna White. <laughs> um, so th this was my response to the original Loteria cards, which the images I've always been in love with. They're here on the cards. You're welcome to play. I think someone is running the game. Uh, also, um, and they're, they're cards and images like uh, Los Slugs, El Sasquatch, uh, El Nick <laughs> Um, it, you know, so uh, the, la gay marriage. So there's lots of them there. I hope you enjoy them and take a look. Uh, also, there's a game here. Since I am an educator, it's really important, I think, to um, let people know that there are more uh, a, a world of artists out there, Mexicanas, and all kinds of Latino artists that are not Frida Kahlo. Frida Kahlo has really got a following, and for good reason. But she also, there are also many, many wonderful artists that uh, are from our culture that I believe um, that people should know about, including the ones on the list there. If you want to take a minute to read about those women, their beautiful faces are below on the key. Uh, it's primarily a kids game, but any of you are welcome to play if you want to spin the wheel. We're all about the fun here, so um, please make yourself comfortable in the booth. Uh, I do I do primarily two series of artwork. One is uh, kind of from my own culture, especially around Dia de los Muertos. And also um, I do a series of, since I'm a, a fisher, I'm a fly fisher, and I spend a lot of time up in the mountains, I have um, some large uh, fish painting, just kind of abstract large fish painting. They're on my website. I do have some cards if you're interested, but I don't want to. I don't want to take up too much time here. Um, Suzanne is an incredible tinsmith, so I think I'm going to take pass the uh, mic on to her, and we can take questions afterwards or or not. So, oh, I wanted to say one thing too about the Donald Trump here. Uh, this is in the tradition of cartoneras, their paper mache Judas figures. If you're not familiar with them in Mexico, there's quite a tradition, and in fact in lots of Latin America, a tradition of uh, creating uh, what was used to work, uh, what are called Judas figures, and they're kind of burned in effigy. Um, this is part of the Easter celebration. I saw it when I was in, in uh, Tucson, Arizona, and, and it, it's still alive. Still alive. Still alive. Okay. It's still alive. And uh, so this is my um, expression of that of that tradition. It's not uh, something that I came up with on my own, but there are, I do have an informational sheet if you're interested in that tradition up here on uh, paper mache of political figures. And usually the figures that are, are uh, done in paper mache are, are figures that are not good for, uh, the, the not on the side of the people. Uh, so this is uh, my contribution. I'll put the sheets out here and uh, you're welcome to come back and play the game or ask questions or whatever. So that's that's all I have to say. Okay, bueno. Suzanne's got it very shy. <laughs> I shall say a word. Hi folks, uh, good to see you all here. Um, enjoy yourselves. Over and out. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> and this is my sister here, Sylvia. So she moved up here from San Diego. <laughs> no, I'm just up here. And here are the informational seats. So enjoy yourself. Muchas gracias. Muchísimas gracias. Alguna pregunta? Is there any questions for the artists here? No. Where so maybe. Dia de los Muertos is in Mod Kearns Art Center. The reception is October the 16th. I invite you all on their behalf to the fiesta and the party there, the reception. It's always a good party. Also on October the 27th, they're having a Saturday uh, fun day, and Suzanne and I will be there as well on that day. It's, I think, from 1 to 4 on Saturday. So enjoy the fiesta. Thanks for coming. Muchísimas gracias. Gracias por esta información y por tan bonito arte. 
Bueno, pues quizá después pueden volver a jugar un juego de lotería, ¿no? You could come back and play a game of lotería. When we're done with the tour. Ok, we're gonna move on to the next. Um, Muy bien. So we're here with the artwork, Walk this evening, and we just would like to hear a little bit about your art, what inspires you, um, what medium you use, anything you want to tell us about your art. And this is a bilingual uh, tour, so you can do both English or Spanish, or you can choose the language that you prefer to use. Ok, entonces vamos a, a, a preguntarle que el artista qué tipo de medio utiliza para su arte, qué le inspira, eh, ella se va a presentar un poquito a decirnos algo más de ella. Buenas tardes, mi nombre es Isabel Magali López de Tronzi, uh, soy original de México con uh, mis abuelos de Chochotecas en, uh, en el estado de Oaxaca. Hello, my name is Isabel Magali López Utronzi. I was born in Mexico. Uh, my background is Chochoteca from the north of Oaxaca. Um, mi trabajo es en madera, son óleos en madera y yo hago también mis propios mosaicos en casa. Originalmente lo que me atrajo es traer la cultura de México, lo, más que todo la prehispánica y la colonial. My art is made on uh, wood panels, oils on wood panels. I make my own tiles for the frames of the paintings. And uh, originally why I wanted to start painting was I wanted to bring the myths, the legends, the stories, mainly of the pre-Hispanic people, but also the colonial times. Uh, it's such a colorful culture that is, it's just, you know, it's just vivid and it just screams to want to be said and told. Um, so I can give you a little sample right here. This is called the three faces of the agave. Las tres caras del agave. The first face is, this is a blue agave. And in the middle, the core is like a pineapple. And inside there's some milk. And the pre Spanish would get that milk and they would ferment it and they made pulque. And you can still find pulque today in Mexico. The Spaniards came, they didn't like pulque, so they distilled it and made tequila. In Oaxaca, they couldn't call it tequila, so they roasted the pineapples and they made, any guesses? Mezcal. So you have pulque, tequila, and mezcal, the three places of the agave. La historia es, es un agave azul, el centro es una piña. En la piña hay una leche y los prehispánicos fermentaban esa leche y e hicieron pulque y el pulque todavía se encuentra en México. La segunda es los españoles vinieron y no les gustó el pulque, entonces lo destilaron y le hicieron tequila. No se puede llamar tequila más que si viene de la ciudad de tequila. En Oaxaca decidieron rostizar las piñas y hacer mezcal. Entonces tienes las tres caras del agave, el pulque, tequila y mezcal. Tengo varias pinturas que tienen unas historias. Uh, tengo aquí la historia de la vainilla. Es el origen de la vainilla que viene de México. La historia dice que había una hermosa princesa y un príncipe. El, el padre de la princesa no quería que se casara con nadie, pero estaban enamorados. Entonces decidieron huir juntos, pero sabían que no los iban a dejar en paz. La única manera de estar juntos era transformarse. Él se transformó en árbol y ella se transformó en orquídea. La orquídea es la vainilla. So this is a story of vanilla, how vanilla came to be. So there was a beautiful princess, and of course the father did not want to marry her too. Nobody was good enough. So the prince convinced her, let's run away. They decided that they were never going to be left alone, so they needed to figure out a way to stay together. So he decided to transform into a beautiful big uh, tree and she transformed herself into a beautiful orchid that climbed all around him. The next day they came and they couldn't find anything but the clothes and a beautiful perfume with the vanilla beans hanging and that's how vanilla came to be. So, thank you very much. Muchísimas gracias Isabel, wow, muy linda tu, tu, tu arte y muy bonito el medio también que utilizas, muchísimas gracias. Gracias. Ok, thank you, we're gonna move on, you can come back and, and 
take a look at a, at your own pace later on. This artist, if she, if she can introduce herself and also tell us a little bit about her art. Eh, si te podrías, pudieras presentar y decirnos un poco de tu arte, qué te inspira a hacerlo y eh, qué tipo de medio utilizas. Okay. Sí. Bueno, yo soy una escritora. I grow some poetry and I also grow some guides for English speakers to learn Spanish and this is a guide for Spanish speakers to learn English. Uh, this is only English and this is bilingual. I also do um, embroidery over canvas. I, I embroider um, each piece myself and I also make headbands and um, donuts for their hair. I just like those things. And well I'm from Mexico. I was born in Mexico City and grew up in Querétaro and Guanajuato. I studied English in, in Querétaro for seven years and then came here to study English at the at the community college for another year and get my uh, my diploma so I could um, go to college here but I already did in Mexico so I I didn't <laughs> I just grow books and they're very helpful for my children I have two children and they are bilingual and I um, I enjoy this this fiesta and I enjoy doing this Things. This is my my hobby and my job. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> uh, in Spanish? Yeah. Okay. Uh, hola, mi nombre es Carla Núñez y soy escritora de poesía y también de algunas guías para aprender español o inglés. Um, hair clips que hago en abordado sobre canvas, um, diademas y donas para el pelo. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias, Carla. Ok, so you can come back if you are thinking about learning Spanish or los que quieran aprender más inglés. Tenemos aquí estos muy buenos libros, así es que pueden volver en un ratito más para echarle un vistazo a los libros. Muchas gracias, Carla. Okay. Do you speak both English and Spanish? Or? Okay, so you can just choose to, to do it in English. And so basically we would just like to know what inspires you, what medium you use for your art, and anything else you would like to tell us. And your name, yes. Well, my name's uh, David Placencia. I've been here for about 10 years now, never going home to Southern California, full convert. But um, I do uh, mainly things that deal with connections and what connects us to our society and literally what connects us together, like as far as neuroscience, neurons. Um, so basically, the uh, fun part with my booth is I get throw on 3D glasses and the 3D effect will kind of increase and pop up just for a fun element. And then I have some other non-3D artworks that again deal with covalent bo uh, bonds or hemoglobin or uh, photoganglion receptor cells and um, but then I kind of just do whatever I want which is kind of fun so I've been doing owls lately you'll see uh, so many different owls do you, ha do you have an owl yourself at home? Uh, no. no? Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Any questions for David? No? Alguna pregunta para nuestro artista? Tenemos un poquito más de tiempo aquí. Sí. Can, can you tell us more about the Emerald Art classes at Emerald oh. Art Center? <laughs> The question is if, they, if David can tell us a little bit more about the Emerald Art Class, um, our, our Center classes. So at the Emerald Art Center I have the pleasure of uh, sneaking in all this uh, with the 3D glasses and be able to teach young ones about the nature of light, chromatic aberration, valley differentials, and it's a program from 6 to 18 year olds completely free with donations and it's been a lot of fun these last three years. Okay, perfecto. And you have some flyers there if anybody wants some. Does anybody want a flyer? For the classes? <laughs> okay, okay, muy bien. Pues muchísimas gracias. 
Y ahorita Bien. podemos... Pues Andrea, vamos a hacer este tour de manera bilingüe. Si quieres puedes hablar en inglés y en español. So we're gonna, I'm explaining to Anna that we're doing this bilingual, a bilingual tour so she can explain um, her art to us in English and Spanish. And basically we would just like to know what uh, medium you use, what inspires you to do your art, and anything else you would like us to know. Pues lo que me gusta es pintar. Hago estas pinturas, es mi, es mi nieto y mi novio. Estas son, bueno, dibujos nada más, las pinturas están en el Townsend Tea House, ahí, si quieren ver. Uh, también me gusta hacer títeres, que están escondidos aquí, ¿verdad? Esto me encanta, esto es lo que estoy haciendo ahorita. Ok, so I, well, I like to talk in English, <laughs> sorry. So I, I'm a painter, and um, these are sketches I did of my grandson and my boyfriend. The paintings are in Townsend Tea House, so you can see them there. And I also have some paintings in Lincoln Gallery, I look me in the eye. No, those are the color pencil. So these are just some assemb assemblages that I did. Um, Inspired, inspirado por la madera que encontré. Esto era una ma un, un palo del perro de un amigo mío. Y lo robé. This is a, this is, <laughs> this was a stick from my friend's dog. And it looked to me like wings of a horse. So I made that. And this was a magnolia branch. And of course the jumping spider. Muchas gracias, eh? Muchísimas gracias. Any questions here? No? Okay. You can come back in just a little bit. Uh -huh. Muchísimas gracias. How are you doing? Muy bien. Muy bien, qué bien. So, we are here uh, with our walk and we are doing this tour bilingually. You can either answer in English and Spanish or only English, whatever you prefer. And uh, basically we would like to ask them um, what inspires you to do your art, what medium you use, and anything else you would like us to know. My process is a lot about color and patterns, and I love to uh, work with uh, brush pens, watercolor brush pens, as well as acrylic and mixed media. And I love glitter, lots of gold and glitter. Yeah. ¿Hay alguna pregunta para Sophie? Do we have any questions? No? ¿Alguien quisiera saber algo más? No? Ok, bueno, pues podemos volar aquí un poco más tarde entonces. Muchas gracias, Sophie. Thank you very much. It's Ok, ya estamos todos aquí. Ok, entonces me gustaría presentarles a, a Esteban Camacho. Eh, Esteban eh, es un muralista. Eh, eh, ha estado trabajando aquí en esta comunidad por varios años, pero mejor lo voy a dejar ahí un poco más de lo que hace. So, here we are Esteban Camacho. He's a muralist. He has been working in this community for several years. He goes back and forth between here and Costa Rica, which is where my family is from, right? So, he works in both of these communities. I, I will let him explain more than what he does and uh, you know, what, what, he, what inspires him, what medium he, he uses, and uh, anything else you would like us to know. Okay. Thank you very much. Buenas tardes. Good evening. I want to say thank you uh, for being on this California land, North America, uh, all of the Americas, all the countries. I want to, I've been painting murals since I was 17, and my art teacher and my parents have been very inspirational and the motivation to bring art and use it as a powerful, expressive medium. And I, I started when I was 17, so about 13, 14 years painting murals. And now we're experiencing one of the biggest mural painting uh, events in the world, in the Renaissance, in a, in a way. More murals have been painted in the last five years than they ever have. And it's, uh, perhaps it's, uh, we have been constructing and building on this this planet, so now there's all these surfaces that need to be created, so many more messages that need to be explored or expressed to the younger generations. So, my artwork is ecological, or I take inspiration from having been born in Costa Rica and also being a child and going camping in, here in the coast, in eastern Oregon. This mural is called or it's about bioluminescence. 
and I actually started these canvases with my college class, or my class that I teach in Costa Rica. We went to a few, we went on a few field trips, and then, then I, I projected some lights onto it, and but the project wasn't done, and just recently I went on a boat for 10 days, and with the, with the Marine, Hathi Marine Center, and various universities in the city of Plankton. So I got to see some of these baby larva, baby squid, all types of jellyfish that I hadn't really seen firsthand under a microscope or even in my hand. So then I spent some more time thinking about this, and in my description here, it talks about what plankton is because we know that whales in general, or a large whale, a blue whale, it's plankton. But what is plankton? So, so look at this painting for a second, and now try to hold your breath for three seconds and think about it because we take more, you know, plankton produces much more oxygen than the forest. So, but we don't, we don't, uh, we can't see phytoplankton. It's microscopic, and it's and we go up. There's, there's all these fluid, fluid systems that we have to just be part of, and not necessarily can understand it. So this is this piece, uh, and then there's some other paintings. Uh, behind us and over there is a mural that I painted for a Latino event called uh, Meet Me at Socolo, and that's also part of what I do in Eugene is go to schools and meet with teachers and students, and we do art projects together as a way to do large-scale art and have the kids do this because it's very motivational to have a wall or a canvas this big and paint it. And so my hope is to empower youth and anybody to do artwork, especially if it's to have a good message about taking care of the environment. So, any, anyone have any questions? How, how long should I be talking for, too? More? So, I consider my work being impressionistic with some detailed realism, and I like to work fast. I, I think I enjoy building the stretcher bars and the canvas, and then I spray everything wet, and I put blue paint and let it drip and work it on the floor, so it can take a couple hours to do the big background. But this has been taking maybe four months, because I did it in Costa Rica, and then I unrolled it and brought it here. But uh, how about 50 hours to 100 hours? There we go. The more you work on a project, the better it is. Well, you said, you said roll, so you can paint it while it's still. No, no, no. I, I stretched it, and as it was stretched, uh, one of my first exhibitions was about birds. I've always been enjoying, and there I sort of developed this watercolor technique, but using acrylics, because I use acrylics because it is, well, less toxic than oil paints, and also it's what you use for exterior buildings and murals. Um, or at least, you can mix a lot of things with the acrylics. You can mix anything, uh, materials. So, as, what's really nice is the canvas absorbs the, the pigment, but if you paint first and then do washes over, you have these different levels of absorbance. And so you get these different effects. And because I'm painting a lot of water ecosystems, I like to use water as part of the the technique to get drips, to get uh, spreads of different colors merging together. So I think my question was more about because the panels, how did you create it? Um, did you have, did you have all the panels all together? And then yeah, they, they, they kind of go together. They've always been propped on the, on the floor or hung. In a way, I 
also am interested in exploring other mediums, so I didn't have the time to set up a digital projector, but I would like to imagine, imagine some of these, like this thing is called a dinoflagellum. It's a microscopic phytoplankton, and it, and it glows. And when a dolphin swims through a, a group of these, it like will illuminate the entire dolphin. So I would like to show during the during the day I would like people to appreciate the painting and during special events I would like this thing to glow and move and bring it to another level of interactivity. And these paintings behind us, over there, and in the front, is like us the Fibonacci spiral on the earth showing I said Greenland, and then there's a bicycle and kind of a map view of Eugene. So, and I put Alder Street, which is a very, very bike friendly road. And we live in an incredible bike friendly community for a you know, world class biking community. That painting actually got stolen when I installed it in a public space in Portland, and then it got um, recovered. And so it was an interesting event. I, I, the EMU had these canvases, and over the weekend someone took it, and I put a little prayer on a on a UFO sort of uh, table. And then the, one of the officers was reading, "Can I please return the mural?" And then immediately he got the phone call that someone had left the canvas in the lobby of one of the of the dorms. And so I recovered my painting and this, these canvases were sort of the, the proposal or the mock-up for a mural that I then painted in Churchill. And so I've done several murals in various high schools and elementary schools. And this piece again is, I, with the students, we went to the different departments at the U of O, science, biology, physics, chemistry, and talk and ask some of the professors, well, what is sustainability? So one of the physicists said, and this equation is written out on the canvas, and it says, the mass of a passenger on a bike is much greater than the mass of a passenger over a car. So you know, we were about 100 and, as they were, 200 pounds, and a bicycle is like 50 pounds, whereas a car is almost, almost a ton. So, Trying to, and so then, and then the equation of respiration and photosynthesis. You know, a human being exhales 500 pounds of CO2, but a tree only pumps out 70 pounds of oxygen a year. So we need about seven or eight trees to just match what we inhale. Another thing I learned about when I was doing this research on the ocean is that all plant beings, trees, uh, phytoplankton, also exhale CO2. At night, plants don't do photosynthesis. So everybody metabolizes their food, and everybody needs oxygen to survive. But plants then during the day produce oxygen. And so that's an important thing to, we're, we're a part of that cycle. So, yeah. anybody else have a question? Well, muchísimas gracias, Esteban. Thank you very much. That was very interesting. Um, Esteban has uh, other pieces of art around the city, so um, you can probably. Oh, yes. I want to just uh, one more thing. I'm doing a. Uh, a local project this month for an organization called our Children's Trust. There's a federal courthouse. The, the, at the federal courthouse, we're going to be trying to protect the environment from climate change and putting the government in its place and trying to change federal laws to do that. And so in the next couple of weeks, I'm hoping to do a mural with high school and youth. And so. I'm, that's what all my focus is going to be on this, this month of September. So please uh, learn about what our Children's Trust is doing or talk to me about the art project. Thank you. Okay. So,
information if people want to get a hold of you. Okay, so if you want to get involved in one of these projects, maybe you can take a picture of this contact information. <laughs> Muchas gracias, Esteban. Y eh, sí, como les decía, Esteban tiene arte por toda la ciudad, así es que también pueden ir a varios lugares y eh, observar otras cosas que él ha hecho. Ok, ahora. Y en regiones extranjeras también me aprecian a mí Dicen que hubo no hubo nada, me voy mal yo por de madrugada De madrugada me voy mal yo porque el guayabo me vuelve loco Que usted, que usted, que usted la mando a poner Que si la pone la paga, si no la pone también Que si la pone la paga, si no la pone también So we are now at the Broadway Commerce Center. Estamos en el centro de comercio de la calle Broadway. Ya les di todos los avisos de oportunidad y de gracias. So we thank the sponsors once again. Uh, and I am not going to say anything because I'm going to just introduce the wonderful Jessica Zapata that you heard and saw dancing and playing Harana and dancing con Dango. Uh, so, because this is something that she has spent a lot of time and effort curating and also as a participant in the photographic exhibits that you see here. Eh, le voy a pasar el micrófono a nuestra magnífica anfitriona que además es la curadora de esta colección de fotografías fantástica y además es una de sus contribuyentes, una fotógrafa también ella. Y ella va a, a, a contarnos de qué se trata eso. Thank you. Buenas tardes, voy a hablar en español y luego Selene me va a ayudar a traducir. Sí, porque tiene que practicar su inglés. She needs to practice her English. <laughs> no, gracias, thank you so much for coming. Muchas gracias por venir. Y estoy eh, esta tarde, ustedes van a disfrutar de unas fotografías uh, de unos artistas, fotógrafos de la ciudad donde yo soy, por Navaja Morelos. These photographs that you're going to enjoy today are from artists and photographers from the town of Cuernavaca, Morelos, which is where I come from. Y bueno, eh, como ustedes van a poder notar, son diversos aspectos en los que ellos quieren demostrar. Estos fotógrafos se dedican a visitar los pueblos, los pueblos y a tomar fotografías de los de las actividades y las tradiciones que existen en cada comunidad, porque cada color, cada Cada estado tiene muchísimas tradiciones, entonces tienen fiestas y fiestas y fiestas cada fin de semana. One of the things you're going to notice is that they cover a lot of different subjects. Um, the artists that are participating in this exhibit go to all the little towns and try to capture the many activities and traditions of each town, um, especially all the fiestas. I think everybody got that word. <laughs> Muchas y muchas, lots and lots of parties and festivities um, and celebrations. That's really the, the, the appropriate translation there. Um, and so this is attempting to capture that diversity in the celebration of the many towns in Mexico. En la parte de aquí tenemos a artista que se llama Marilule. Marilule, ella tiene una, 
un app que se llama Morelos en tu mano y ella se dedica a visitar a los productores, a cada productor que existe en Morelos. Ellos van, uh, documentan su trabajo, toman fotografías y luego invitan a los productores a presentar sus fotografías y su trabajo en las diferentes comunidades de Morelos. So the artist right here kind of behind us is Mari Lule. She has an app called Morelos en tu mano. Morelos in your hand. But I guess it's in Espanol, so you have to look it up in Morelos en tu mano. Um, and she likes to visit producers. So, um, all of the, the, the artisanal producers of many things like mezcal and all kinds of other things have come out of the state of Morelos and she likes to document the, the work that they do. En este lado tenemos a otro fotógrafo que se llama Guillermo Reza. Guillermo Reza, como Marisela Figueroa, son, yo creo que, y Fernando Soto, bueno, en realidad todos, son artistas muy conocidos en México. Y bueno, ellos, eh, eh, ahorita él vive en Cancún, en la parte de la zona de Mérida, Cancún, Playa del Carmen, está documentando lo que sería todas las zonas... Eh, preservadas por, por el Estado para, para protegerlas, para, para documentar todo lo que está pasando y cómo se está acabando el ambiente en esas zonas. Él también se dedica muchísimo a lo que son los paisajes, entonces ustedes pueden apreciar aquí, tiene fotografías de paisajes, de lo que es la parte de la zona centro de México. So here we have the work of Guillermo Reza and also and with um, Arturo Medero, everybody here including also Maricela Figueroa, they're all very well known in Mexico. Their work is uh, very much appreciated there. And Guillermo, uh, in particular, has specialized in um, picturing the, the preserve, the nature preserves, all of the lands that are set aside, you know, like state parks type things. Um, and also he loves to photograph landscapes and um, kind of capture um, not only the beauty but also the the alterations and the damage that sometimes is taking place in these um, in these places. Gracias. Tenemos a Arturo Medel. Arturo Medel es el fotógrafo de esta, es el autor de esta fotografía. Él va mucho a las a las zonas en donde se produce el nopal el nopal, el maguey, y es lo que le gusta documentar a él. Él se dedica mucho a lo que es la fotografía de blanco y negro. Pues tiene un estudio muy grande de lo que es las festividades del Día de Muertos, los, los que siembran el nopal, el maguey. Es muy bonito su trabajo también de él. Arturo, Arturo Medel is represented in this photograph over here. Um, he does a lot of black and white work. Um, and in his uh, studio you will find a vast collection of things like the Day of the Dead, festivities, and also this particular photo which is about um, a nopal, or um, what do you call nopal in English besides nopal? It's a cactus, it's a type of cactus um, that has many different uses in Mexico. So um, he really has um, uh, spent a lot of time documenting those fields and those images in black and white. La siguiente artista se llama Marisela Figueroa Samilpa. Su fotografía es esta y hay otra colección de fotografías de ella en esa área. Ella documenta mucho lo que serían las tradiciones de las danzas. Las danzas, ella tiene una colección enorme de las danzas tradicionales en Morelos y en Guerrero. Entonces, la mayoría de sus fotografías que ven aquí es sobre las festividades de la danza. Marisela Figueroa is in this photograph over here and also a few more over on that side. Um, and she really likes to document the dances, the traditional dances and all that that involves. And you'll, you'll find a few examples of that wonderful work of hers. En el muro de allá, las fotografías, uh, las primeras fotografías son de Fernando Soto. Fernando Soto es un fotógrafo muy conocedor de lo que serían las tradiciones en Morelos y en otros estados. Él visita mucho a los artesanos. Los artesanos documentan su trabajo y tiene muchísimo conocimiento de lo que es el, el, el arte, el arte folclórico en, el, en la zona de Morelos. Um, 
our photographer over on that wall is also um, very keen and interested in the traditions, especially the folk art, the craftsmen, the um, the vast artisanal history of um, of the state of Morelos, and there is. Um, Again, some really interesting work and um, especially the documentation of these practices that have been going on for generations um, is, is very So you will find my two of my photographs. I am an architect in Mexico, not here, but in Mexico I studied architecture and that has been also um, my, my interest and my passion in uh, photographing um, the colonial architecture in Mexico with so many examples and I have a collection called uh, Doors and Windows um, and uh, I want to thank you all for being here today and I also want to thank Ricardo Cárdenas, our wonderful musician who is coming back soon and when he comes back we're all going to uh, clap and thank him so much. Where is he? Ahí viene, ahí viene, ahí viene Ricardo. <laughs> okay, so thank you, Jessica. And we're going to be here for five minutes, and then you're going to hear my lovely voice on this microphone again, so that we head to our next stop. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Gracias. So we will be here until 7:30. If you wanna check around and listen to the music, we will be here until 7:30. Thank you for coming. La concha dice en el mar yo mantengo una riqueza una prenda de belleza con un brillo natural Yo valgo más que el coral, que el diamante, que el rubí Yo no me cambio por ti Pues yo valgo donde quiera y en regiones extranjeras también me aprecian a mí Dicen que hubo no hubo nada, me vuelvo al yopo de madrugada De madrugada me vuelvo al yopo porque el guayabo me vuelve loco Que usted 